our goal for this for this chat with the community is to kind of go over some exciting updates, go over what's on your mind, you know, touch on some of the recent events in the marketplace and kind of take some questions from the community. Yeah, cool. So I think the first thing to set up is that the fundamental goal of what Immutable is building should be decorrelated to the crypto markets because what we are building is the use of NFTs to enable digital ownership of unique value. And the first market that we see as being the most valuable one to win is gaming. We see that as transforming into something that people currently rent and they own a centralized line in a database, it's something they can truly own. And overnight, that becomes a trillion dollar market because you have you know, the ability to have secondary financial derivatives and options and index funds. Uh, and typically what you see is an order of magnitude more in secondary financial market creation when you have the primary market turned into a real asset. Uh, and so the goal of that is like gamers aren't trading these assets because they you know, want to make money in a, a speculative manner that's correlated to, to what Ethereum is doing. They're trading because they want to play with a card in a video game, because they want to buy the skin that their favorite streamer used in their favorite game. And absolutely, there'll be economic elements to this. This is why we're building true economies. But those economic elements should be decorrelated from what the crypto market is doing. And so the more we build toward that thesis and get more games live, the more that sort of that traction happens. Um, and, you know, games are certainly not going any slower because of this market. You know, people still want to spend time. In fact, um, you know, it could even be counter cyclical in that time spent on entertainment uh, in, in the broader macro environment is going to be increased. And I think the other thing to... Uh, really call out is that the position of immutable right now is exceptionally positioned because what matters in these types of markets is not what is the market priced at it's what's our relative ability to compete you know and and create the best possible solution for our customers and right now we have more than 300 million dollars in the bank and we've got a, a sizable token war chest we've got an org chart that has um really strong infrastructure and uh, a really strong bench of executives which means we can go out there and by companies that are struggling because the, the market um, is where it is and they're struggling to raise um, and really improve our competitive position over the next 12 months. So I see this as a massive opportunity for Immutable. And, you know, what I always say is the messaging internally to our, our employees is always the same, which is we are building real products with real use cases. This is not, you know, people in crypto selling to each other um, based on some hyped up sort of uh, staking reward, et cetera, which, you know, can have its use cases. But what we're fundamentally building is like those things should exist to service a core use case of people trading stuff because it gives value to them. Uh, and so we always say the market can go down 90 percent and it does not change the mission. And I think it's really important to constantly inoculate people because as we get the highs, we will absolutely get these kinds of markets emerging. And I think that, you know, the market could go down another 50% from where it is today. And that would not stress me out. Um, I remember the last time in, in the end of 2019 when Ethereum went to $80. And even then it was still, we've seen the benefit that this brings to players. We've seen the benefit that this can bring to musicians, to creators, the greatest shift in wealth distribution in the last, you know, sort of five decades, essentially to, to creators ever. Um, and that is not, made up based on sort of speculative demand. So I think we're in an exceptional position. Um, we're very comfortable in these sorts of markets. And I think the next 12 months will be a really big opportunity to build core, you know, um, customers um, and increase the, the sort of scale and offerings of our current product. Awesome. Thank you for that. I think, yeah, it is, it is very important to kind of underline, you know, you and the team have seen this before kind of in 2019, you know, 2018, 2019, right? Um, building is nothing new for Immutable. And if you look at some of our partners, right, gaming, we, we really are bullish on on gaming, right? If you look at um, GME, Alluvium, right? Some of these partners, Ember Sword, Planet Quest, right? We're very excited um, to kind of continue working and um, building these games um, out with our partners. Do you want to touch a little bit on some of these partners? Or do you want to talk about the marketplaces that I think are going to bring more, um, you know, users and liquidity, this kind of, uh, you know, really positive parts to uh, the ecosystem? So I want to share some data points. Immutable over the last three months has been doing the most number of NFT trades out of any protocol in the world. It includes Solana, Ethereum Layer 1, Polygon, uh, Flow, you name it. And that's because of our focus on driving sort of 
high volume transactions for high utility use cases, whether it's book games, whether it's, um, you know, uh, Alluvium or Planet Quest or um, Gods Unchained or Guild of Guardians. And that is with three marketplaces live. Over the past three months, we have signed more than eight marketplace deals with some of the biggest marketplaces in the world. Some of these you know about, some of them you don't, and you will come to know about over the coming weeks. And uh, we have the second largest marketplace uh, in the world, um, which is about to be sort of an announced and, and will integrate shortly after. Um, we've got many who just went live, so OKX, uh, Kinguin, uh, GameStop, um, which is obviously going live very soon, OpenSea, which uh, we're currently integrating with and, and is still on track for a um, launch in, in the next sort of three to four months, um, and many, many more to come. And this means that every single trader on our platform is now going to have their orders shown everywhere and capable of being fulfilled everywhere. And so that number doing the most NFT trades in the world is just gonna go on steroids. And this is even without the incentives which are coming out this quarter for every single trader on the platform. So I think we're about to see some really meteoric rises um, and a couple of catalysts that we haven't turned on yet. Um, so I, I, I'm really, really excited about that, just to be candid. Um, the second thing is we have some of the coolest gaming content in the blockchain right now building. And I think that the most important thing is gaming is power law, right? So the biggest games will have more users than uh, the, you know, the, the next sort of 99% of games combined. It is the standout winners that have the vast majority of users that generate the vast majority of revenue. And we really focus on winning over those core high quality gaming customers. And I think there's probably, you know, not much at the, the level of quality that we've got building on um, Immutable today. I'm ridiculously excited about uh, Alluvium. I just got beta access uh, and it is genuinely uh, very addictive. Um, so I, I hope I, you know, can can kind of, I, I may have to delete it at some point. I was used to be historically addicted to TFT, which is just, um, you know, a very, very good game. But this stuff is the stuff that's gonna take things mainstream, you know? Building a game that people fundamentally want to play can triple the DAO of crypto overnight because the DAO of a reasonably popular game, 100 million users, uh, is literally bigger than the total user base of crypto today. Um, so that is what excites me. Building content and infrastructure that helps enable the next billion users of Web3. Um, we've got the Planet Quest Planet Sale coming up. We've got the Ember Sword launch coming soon as they fully migrate over from Polygon. Um, so, I mean, we, we've got a huge ton of content that's actually launching in the next few months and good games take time to build. So, I mean, uh, Alluvium has been in development for years now. Um, same as, you know, Ember Sword and, and Planet Quest. So really, really excited about these. You touched on it a little bit, right? How, how Mutable is positioned for the next 12 months, right? We have a war chest, we have a lot of cash, right? We're looking to find partners that want to build on us and especially partners that might be in a bit of a situation that need help. We can come in and um, and potentially, you know, bring them into the ecosystem. When you start looking three, six, 12 months, um, what are some kind of big milestones you're looking forward to? Yeah, so I think important to remember Immutable was built at the start of 2018, which is the largest crypto bear market today. And I think it builds really exceptional products. When you are building in a bear market, you are not having your product market fit papered over by token incentives that mean people are using your product without actually any reason to do so. And we've seen many, many DeFi protocols launch with you know giant incentives, but actually fail to retain any product market fit or users after those incentives decay. And that can cause death spirals. So fundamentally, I think bear markets are really exceptional for making sure that the products that we build, people genuinely want to use. Nowhere is this more important than gaming. And I, I, I've said this a few times, but if you look at the industry right now, where NFT has the most differentiated public response is if you look at something like music, something like artistic creators, you have very little backlash from those customers. And that's because the problem we're solving for them is creator monetization. And that problem is solved to a quality degree of 10 to a thousand times better than the status quo. If you're a musician, if you're an artist, you get far better monetization via NFTs than you do through traditional services. The offering that we are solving for gamers is completely different. Gamers do not play games to make money. Which the people in the West don't need to make $20 a day. It's not their job. They play games to escape, to have fun, to self-actualize, to socialize. And so the problem that we're solving is creating a better game. 
And absolutely, that should include a real economy because that's what they're spending their money on. But if you do not hit that sort of table stake of this game will hold up even without crypto in it, you're not solving uh, for that fundamental problem. You're not offering 10 times the value, uh, which we know is what you have to offer in order to truly disrupt an existing incumbent model. Gaming also takes time to build. So unlike PFPs where people can spin up a great looking PFP project in a month, great game takes generally a minimum of two years to put together. I think Alluvium has been um, incredibly quick at putting together what they have. Like they've literally ramped over the last year from um, 20 people to 300 people, which is insane. So, I mean, a lot of these, these games are putting in very best efforts to blitz scale and um, start delivering high quality content now. But the reason I'm really excited is if you look at the roadmap coming up, we've got the merge, we've got um, uh, the, the sort of uh, scaling environment rapidly improving so that we can cater to these games. And we've also got literally all of the crypto's best games coming out in the next sort of um, three to 12 months. And the standard is only going to get higher from here. You know, the bar is no longer going to be set at you can have a crappy game with a strong DeFi element and people will play it. It will be the bar is everyone is creating a high quality piece of content. Um, literally, VCs are seeing this. If you're a gaming VC, the vast majority of your pitches today are somehow Web3 enabled. So we're seeing this forcing function, like wherever venture capital money is going is where the talent is going to go. And right now there is $50 billion pointed at Web3 over the next few years. And a good chunk of that is going to be on gaming in particular. So I think from both a macro perspective and Immutable's position in this market, I'm really excited about the next 12 months. Um, I think it's time to truly build some exceptional products that people love to play. And I want to be, you know, our, our goal is to hit 100 million unique users um, as quickly as possible. And that's going to be achieved by having three or four of these breakout hits. It's Guild of Guardians going mainstream. It's Gods Unchained going mainstream. It's Alluvium going mainstream. Um, and what we're investing in is scaled services that we can offer to every single game. So what we want Immutable to be, if you're a Web2 game developer, every single thing you need to do to make your Web2 game successful in Web3, Immutable should be able to offer you. This is your community playbook and how you take feedback and uh, sort of create the most effective community possible. Here's your go-to-market playbook. Here's your tokenomics playbook. Here's your in-game economy. Here's your, you know, um, marketing. All of that sort of gap in the same way that, you know, Salesforce solved this, uh, in, in the same way that um, Shopify solved this, um, that's what's actually required. And so there's a lot of interesting discourse going on right now about how Economies have to be custom designed. You can't just slap Web3 onto a game. In some ways, I agree. In some ways, I completely disagree, because the only way we make these digital property rights truly uh, scaled across the next thousand games is if we make playbooks that is incredibly easy for these game developers to use. We can't expect a, a random Indio studio to figure out a sustainable economy model from scratch. That's huge effort and huge IP. And we only saw mobile gaming become successful only saw social gaming become successful when key industry leaders developed hit content and then turned the IP of that content into playbooks, which they scaled across many partners. Zynga literally rebranded Mafia Wars into hundreds of different games. One of them was that like a Hello Kitty branded game for kids. And under the hood was the same engine around leveraging Facebook's social graph for sharing, leveraging performance marketing, uh, and having playbooks around ads. So I actually think that's a brilliant offering. And of course, there will always be expert customers who, who go beyond, but we want to develop these fundamental inputs. Here's an economy that is robust and, and, and won't break. Here's an economy that if you sort of, you know, tweak in the right way, will have a crazy viral sort of share to earn incentive mechanism. I really like that. I think um, the shop of bull, the sales force analogies make a lot of sense. And I think you're right. You know, you can have kind of off the shelf economies potentially, you know, for specific games and you can dive into them more deep depending on what the game mechanics are. But um, being kind of a one place, you know, one one stop shop for a lot of these game developers to help them um, is really exciting. And it's actually a good segue into a question we have here. So I know we we are very bullish on video games, right? Gaming is kind of like our first priority right here in our event questions. WT is asking, you know, is video games the first initial target? Obviously, yes, right? Once that process is refined and proven, um, does IMX see itself branching out into other industries like insurance, retail, auto, real estate, etc.? 
Uh, do you want to touch on this a little bit? Yeah, so this is this is what excites me. Um, and sometimes I don't like these sort of video only AMAs because um, like I, this is what really gets me up in the morning. And um, apart from the team is the mission of what Immutable is building because the entire world of unique value is going to be tokenized. Every, everything's going to end up on a blockchain. That is unquestionable at this point. It is inevitable. It may take time. It may take five years. It may take 10 years. And gaming is the fastest one to come. It's the clearest market, has the highest initial value, which is why we're so excited about it. And there's also massive network effects we want. So we are cementing Immutable as the default Web3 platform for the next generation of games um, this year. The infrastructure we've built, if you build a solution that can solve bringing liquidity to a billion in-game items inside World of Warcraft. You've built the solution that can tokenize houses for every jurisdiction across the world. You've built the solution that can facilitate liquidity for the centralized for the tokenization of uh, a million centralized term deposits or unique instruments of value offered to businesses around the world. You've built the infrastructure that can support the trading of sneakers of wine of physical assets or physical art you built a system that supports the trading of trillions of items of private data and enabling the permissionless transfer of ip registered value or income streams between each of these nfts now building that world world where people can trade any form of unique value via the data structure of an nft requires two things and immutable is the only company solving these two problems and that's really the the what we hope to sort of um use as we build up these new verticals the first problem is people want to trade these assets in the context in which they are valuable so if fortnite does nfts they're not going to send them to a random third party marketplace they want people to be able to trade those nfts directly inside the game that's the best experience for players. And also that's Fortnite's business incentive because they want to keep those eyeballs. That presents a problem, which is the ability for that player to sell is then restricted to buyers only inside Fortnite. Immutable solves this problem through our open order book, which means that any buyer can connect with any seller everywhere. So you can imagine maybe you're um, selling a house on Zillow NFT, but someone can buy it, probably the wrong choice of company given recent events, but someone can buy it on um, another trading platform. Or maybe you're buying a term deposit off um, Goldman Sachs and you're selling it on a Bloomberg machine. I mean, these are um, sort of ridiculous examples, but who knows the context in which these things are going to be traded? The most important thing is liquidity. The most important thing is allowing consumers to get the best price. Liquidity is the only thing that matters in the choice of, of what people uh, choose in terms of markets. And that's why from a philosophical perspective, it's very important to me that Immutable wins because we must ensure the solution is built on truly secure infrastructure like Ethereum. Um, you know, we can't afford to have this thing be built on the side chain infrastructure that will just break when it hits a certain size and, and pushes back the industry by a year. That's why it's so uh, uh, such a, a mission driven thing for me. Um, and the second thing is how can you allow assets become liquid based on their variable metadata. So the problem with NFTs today is if you want to buy a particular Alluvium character or a particular Gods Unchained card, you can only put a bid on that individual card, which is crazy. If you want to buy an Apple share, you don't go buy Apple share number 67,002. You go buy an Apple share and you make a bid and that creates a bid ask spread and creates liquidity and depth in the market. And we need this exact same technology for NFTs to go mainstream. We need the ability to bid on any diamond card, you know, uh, any rare alluvial, any Guild of Guardians hero of the diamond status, any term deposit with an interest rate of 2.5 to 3% and three months remaining from a top four bank. And so suddenly we can see we have literally created the engine that takes this total addressable market of the world's unique value made the way that any business and any consumer can trade that value at the best possible price. Um, and if you look at the history of markets that has opened up, this is pretty much the largest total addressable market since the invention of the internet. It is in the trillions of dollars. And the goal of Immutable is to be those global backend, to be the pipes that enables businesses to be successful, to enable consumers to get the best possible price. We solve for gaming, then we solve for finance, we solve for real estate, we solve for real assets, we solve for uh, title, 
relationships. Uh, so very excited for really focusing on those markets in probably about 12 months time. And obviously we have some key marquee deals like TikTok, uh, which we've done. We've got you know collectibles like Disney and Marvel building on our platform. And we'll continue to do those lighthouse level deals or those really significant level deals. But we will start going uh, full on into these new verticals in roughly 12 months time. Amazing. It's real. It's actually really enchanting kind of listening to you talk about it when uh, when we're, we're speak, we start speaking about some of these um, assets that uh, you know are outside of gaming or outside of kind of like the traditional um, things people trade right now and really unlocking these borders. Right. I've been hearing about this layer two summer. Want to kind of get your take on uh, something I've been seeing pop up on podcasts and on Twitter. Yeah. I, so I think. The world is moving toward Ethereum-based solutions as a general trend. I think um, bear markets do this as well because, you know, if you look at risk levels, alt chains are just a higher risk level, and people want to move to less risky assets. And you know, ironically, in uh, crypto, that that is Ethereum and that is Bitcoin. And the stat I loved was for the first time ever, Ethereum went down less than Bitcoin did um, on a big um, sort of downtrend day, which is a really positive signal because it shows that the traction and, and, and the thesis is, you know, Ethereum being this index of future value that is going to be created via Web3. And I mean, I, I can't give too much away, but stay tuned next week because we have one of Immutable's largest announcements to date. Um, around sort of the, the future of what we're building. Um, and I think it will very closely relate to, to the question you've asked me, Oya. Awesome. Love it. I think um, we have another question here from Jubin. I think you might have touched on it, but maybe you can double click on it for him. He said, do you have any thoughts on how Web3 specifically Immutable can get more involved in the decentralization of media, uh, sorry, medical records, items of that nature? Yeah, so I think ultimately, the people driving this innovation are going to be the businesses living on our platform. And we really, really view it as our business to enable the best possible infrastructure to develop whatever it is that you want. If you want to develop tokenized medical infrastructure, absolutely. If you want to develop a tokenized real estate, absolutely. The place we're really diving into developing the core expertise around how you should do that is gaming. We want Immutable to be the one-stop shop for, you know, I'm Blizzard Activision, I'm Fortnite. How do I transition? Um, and even those companies, we want to be the experts too in terms of this is the best way to run your economy and this is the best way to run your community um so that ip is is very very important for, for us to build and if you look at scanning solutions like we're, we're doing it we've done it twice i think that's been really critical to the company the reason that no other scanning solution offers the cost of mint that immutable does is because we built immutable with a gaming customer in mind we knew that gods unchained had 25 million nfts which is more nfts than every other ethereum game combined and that meant we had to develop a solution that was zero cost for minting and suddenly games can mint a billion assets on us and have secondary economy emerge from that without knowing the price at which those have to trade and therefore how much they can afford in minting fees so that is absolutely essential yeah yeah and i think like like you mentioned we are aiming to be kind of the pipe the pipes the pipeline kind of underpinning everything in the future to power this stuff right uh we got more questions flowing in let me see so question can you go over the key differences between imx and lrc for those who are confused new investors in parentheses how do they work together and what are their differences the main differences that highlight is Immutable X is completely dedicated to, to NFTs and, and focusing on gaming NFTs. Um, and, you know, there are some technical differences like the cost to trade on us is, is completely zero gas. Um, our scalability is more than, you know, 10,000 TPS, but I, I'm not going to do a, a comparison. Um, LRC is obviously a, a, a another layer two um, who, uh, you know, can, can offer a similar scaling solution. Um, the really cool things that, Immutable is focused on is how can we create the best possible trading experience by creating this open order book um, and by creating this ability for, for buyers and sellers to match everywhere. Because if you look into the future, ultimately, scaling solutions like ZK rollups are actually going to be a commodity, They're going to be a costs driven business. It's going to be like AWS. And, you know, I, I think Starkware is, is very well positioned in um, there to, to have the cheapest costs, to be the best provider. But in terms of what Immutable is focused on, we are focused on establishing network effects around connecting buyers and sellers for any asset anywhere, because that is what is going to enable the next billion players of games. Hey, I'm, I'm selling an asset inside Gods Unchained that I just, you know, I beat my opponent with. I'm selling, uh, I'm on Twitch 
And via a live overlay, I'm auctioning off the asset that I just used to win a Fortnite tournament. That is, you know, the merchandise or the provenance of my skin. I'm an alluvium and I just want to battle and I am, you know, auctioning off the, the, the asset I used to win this, this champion tournament. The buyers can be from anywhere. The buyers can be on GameStop, on OpenSea, trading programmatically via an API at a trading desk. And this is the core sort of value that Immutable is, is delivering on. That, that value is going to be very differentiating. Um, and that's why we've invested so much in these marketplace efforts over the last sort of um, four months. So that's, that's the thing I think has been um, way beyond my expectation in terms of success. It's been those marketplace integrations, uh, which are all going to come out over the next sort of three to three months. Thanks for that. Um, let's see, we have a question. So here's another one. Question is a little on the nose. Any potential buyers reaching out to Mutable X? Are you guys thinking about aligning yourself with a bigger uh, NYSC company, getting essentially, essentially internalized? Not really. It is in terms of um, alignment. Like we, we have our mission. We have where we're going. Um, of course, investors are always reaching out to Immutable. Um, but um, <laughs> look, I, uh, we, we, our, our goal is how do we make Immutable as big as possible and then, you know, take it to an IPO or an STO. From Strong Hands, is Immutable collabing at all with the A16 Gaming Fund they just announced? Um, not directly Strong Hands, no, but we have a great relationship with the A16Z team. I think they're a great VC firm. Um, look, it, it's fair to say that if any big game is looking at doing uh, Web3, Immutable is in contact. Or even for these young and hungry teams, are we looking at kind of picking up uh, smaller type uh, agencies? Absolutely. I mean, we're going to likely acquire a few firms this year and just hire entire teams. So um, that is more efficient than us for a hiring individual. So absolutely. If you're a team, you want to come work with us, let us know. Um, or we can invest in you and, and have you build on us. Love it. Yeah, I know. I know the um, TA team is, is hard at work and we, we've been hiring many people each week. So it's, it's really exciting seeing the, the growth. Are there any other solutions, L2 solutions besides Amex that allow for gasless transacting? Any competitors coming out uh, top of mind? Yeah, I mean, this is kind of goes back to the same point I made, which is Immutable today has the best scaling offering for games. We have a secure offering and that is the reason why we have so many people coming over from you know, Solana, from Polygon, um, from these sort of chains that have suffered either security incidents or I might touch on uptime even. Like if you look at Immutable's uptime, which means basically how, what percentage of the time can you transact an NFT on Immutable? 99.9 something percent, um, and we're getting it to four nines. If you look at something like, you know, the major L1 competitors or sidechain competitors, we're at 97%. Like, that is a key reason we are winning some of these deals today. So um, the tech is absolutely there, but fundamentally, again, what we're differentiating on is this ability to, because th th there'll be a million scaling solutions out there in, in five years. Um, and again, I think that, you know, what, what Starkware has built will be um, awesome and uh, the, one of the most cost competitive in the entire industry. But what Immutable is focused on is how can we connect buyers and sellers everywhere? How can we develop network effects? How can we create the most successful content on our platform? Um, and that's ultimately what is going to differentiate us from all of these other kind of solutions. And, you know, the fact that we've got an incredible team of 300 people, um, I think we have one of the, uh, we, we've really focused on building a go-to-market organization and a, um, a, a company that can achieve the scale that we need to. I missed a question here. I would like to know the process you have as a company to reach out to creators other than the creator form. Um, I'm assuming this person is talking about uh, game developers. Yeah, look, the, the credit form is best, but also just you get the email or LinkedIn or DM anyone on our BD team or, or tweet at them, tweet at me, I can connect you in. But that creative form we review daily. GameStop and Microsoft are working together. Microsoft is clearly into the NFT market. Any chance you can say if there are any talks with the crypto NFT side of Microsoft and IMX? <laughs> look, I definitely, um, I'm not going to speculate on, on that. Question specifically, specifically for the gaming market, can you give us a little more information with with the Tencent uh, partnership? I played a lot of League and would love to actually have digital ownership over my skins there. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think a, a MOBA like League of Legends or, you know, a, a TFT, which Alluvium is building is a fantastic genres. Um, I expect them, you know, not that specifically, but I expect those genres to, to um, come on Immutable sooner rather than later. And we've obviously already got the, the TFT genre building. Um, Tencent's a fantastic partner. We, we are, you know, um, a, as an investor, we kind of get warm introductions to a lot of their portfolio companies, which has been really awesome. Here's a question from Jay Reese. 
What's the expected outlook for a bigger community for bigger community games like COD, right? Call of Duty and Fortnite adopting NFT marketplaces with the Microsoft acquisition over Activision Blizzard? Should that help speed up the adoption? So uh, again, um, this is all pure speculation. I, I, mm-hmm. So that first of the merger has not gone through. Um, so that acquisition would actually need to go through before any executive influence is exercised um, by Microsoft over Activision Blizzard. Uh, it will depend on how they manage that. So really, it would accelerate things if Microsoft wants to go down the Web3 strategy path, um, which obviously they've already expressed some interest in, and then they aligned that with their subsidiary. Generally, at these sides of companies, you, you see like quite slow strategic integration because um, Blizzard Activision is such a large company, it will, it will run independently for um, a very long time. So I, I, I'm not sure whether it will accelerate or decelerate things. That will ultimately be what is Microsoft's proclivity to um, doing something. Let's see, Wally's World is immutable in discussions with anybody yet that is incorporating NFCs into their product, NFC being near field communication chips that would be embedded in an item that will prohibit counterfeits. For example, a Louis Vuitton purse with an NFC chip that ties the physical with the digital NFT. Um, no, but that seems awesome. And obviously we've got Hero um, who is doing the physical cards. So they're tying you know, a, a more than a million physical cards across the states in America to Immutables NFTs. So like we, we've got a few of these hybrid businesses building on us. Um, that seems like an awesome use case. So if you're doing it, come reach out. That's exciting. Antonym, I think a question that segues perfectly. Uh, how strongly do you feel about the immutability of NFTs? Specifically, Hero and Vive seem like they're still in control of the NFTs they're selling. GU added royalty fees retroactively to already minted tokens, which has al- also caused some pushback. So any, any thoughts there? Yeah, so I think the, the royalty question is a really interesting one. Um, and ultimately, you know, we, we've, we've got a the technologies allow publishers to create guarantees to their customers. Um, you know, I think in this case, it had been sort of um, pre, pre-marketed, but that, that, is, that is really important. Um, so Immutable's approach is a dual approach, which is um, we have immutable metadata and mutable metadata, and both are necessary to create a strong game because you need the ability to mutate or change data according to experience levels. So, hey, my sword is like 100 experience, it's level five. Um, Hey, maybe it evolves into an upgraded form of this NFT. That's what we allow people to do with the mutable data section of our NFTs. But we also have a thing called a blueprint. And this blueprint is essentially the immutable metadata you find on an NFT. And an immutable X NFT is withdrawn to Ethereum layer one, which is a withdrawal, not a bridge transfer. It literally creates, it, it passes along this data and that can never be in any way. So you're actually able to, for zero gas costs, create completely immutable metadata. Um, and that's really important as well. So some of the core aspects of God's Unchained cards, for instance, are stored via that blueprint, such as the, the prototype, the rarity, the, the scarcity, the, the number um, of its unique ID in existence. From Fredison, any teams building IRL token verification on IMX? I don't know how to interpret that question in particular, but there are teams building um sort of like complex airdrop functionality um so i guess that that's something i, I think is really cool and I, i'm excited for more of these primitives to emerge um where you can sort of simply do exciting use cases with imx how significant will gamestop nft be for imx yeah i think it's going to be huge um and again like we, we, you know we're integrating with the second largest marketplace in the world um we've got a, a huge amount of, of things coming up we've got urgency integration doing live but I'm, I'm really excited about gamestop and um that because of the community that they bring um, and that's because of the gaming networks they bring so we've been on the ground with the business team i've met their vpbd and was on the ground with him um in san francisco pitching to games companies um we've got a bunch of the partners already building on immutable who are setting up marketing deals with with gamestop at the moment for the moment they make marketplace and um, kind of launches with immutable so um yeah i i'm really really excited and i think that that community is a really powerful community to kind of tap into to form this um, audience for, for all of the content building on Immutable. So um, yeah, that's that's been going really well. We have, I think, four um, or three full-time employees dedicated to this partnership. So it's a very, very serious investment from Immutable's side. Awesome, awesome. I think um, a really great way to potentially start closing this chat, uh, Mouse, with the question, will the bear market survive Immutable, Robbie? Well, I hope not. As in, I hope the value that we are creating helps drive real macro changes. Like 
I really think there's going to be a massive rotation into gaming over the next 12 months because people will see it as the first credible mainstream use case of NFTs. And the NFT opportunity to me is bigger than DeFi and it's bigger than fungible tokens because fungible tokens are literally a strict subset of what NFTs can achieve. Particularly with our metadata uh, tooling, then you have no trade-off for doing NFTs because you can contain an object's value uniquely, allowing it to be traded based on any fungible subset of its metadata. So you literally have the best of both worlds. But the reason DeFi exists, the reason financial services exist in the real world is to service stuff that people want to do. It's to service business use cases. And so ultimately what we're doing with NFTs is building the reason that DeFi should exist, which is to service these, these kinds of objects or, or forms of unique that people want to own. Um, so I absolutely think that, you know, immutable can be a real driver for, for change in the industry. And one of the things that I'm really excited to share with you next week, I think will be very, very significant for what the future scaling roadmap looks like for Ethereum. Um, and there was another question I wanted to, to touch on, which is someone said, how can the Immutable X community help? I'd say the first thing is just be with us and, and, and give us feedback. Um, you know, you, you are our eyes and ears on the ground. We're building a company that is uh, successful in, in part because of the passion that this Discord has, that our, our Twitter has, that the Layer 2 and Ethereum community at Broad has. And so let us know. Say what you want to see us do. Say where you think we should be going because all of this stuff is incredibly useful for us. We're trying to grow our community. We're, we're hiring a lot more kind of full-time community people into the future. I'm going to be spending a ton of time in this Discord and in Twitter to make sure that we're very regularly in touch. And the second thing is tell your friends. We want games building on us. If you know of a game who's looking for a solution, Tell them about Immutable and, you know, um, tell them to get in touch with us because there are very few games we get in contact with, which if we get a chance to, you know, go into conversation, our conversion rate is really, really high. Um, we, we beat competitors most of the time. And that's because when you look at our technology offering, dedication to gaming in terms of the way we build our tech stack and the advisory services we offer, like we're really, truly like built for games. Um, this is what we've been building since 2018. So great question. Thank you so much. I think, um, that's it. I think thank you so much for your time, Robbie. That was really, really loved chatting with you and, and having the community here to ask questions. Um, and then, you know, we really just get back to get back to work, get back to building. And then like you mentioned, you know, if, if people have questions, ask them here, ask them directly to you on Twitter and, uh, and we kind of go from there. Awesome. Thanks, Ariel. And thank you, Immutables. I will see you soon. Um, stay tuned for next week.